Tabazas is considered to be a vital part of the hero's narrative. Every hero goes to hell at some point. And in the stories, they usually come back, which is a bit that seems weird to me. I don't think that's how it works in real life. The cafe has had a bunch of heroes come through, claiming that they were gonna conquer hell and come back. They never returned, as far as I saw. The idea of Katabasis is that, in the grand scheme of things, Hell, or the Underworld, or Hades, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it's on the outside of wherever we are. Like we're trapped inside the sphere, and we leave it to go to Hell. Did the ancient Greeks ever consider that maybe we've been on the outside the whole time, just waiting to get in? Maybe they did. Matter of perspective. I guess I'll ask one sometime if I ever meet one. But perhaps we're just waiting our entire lives for this, to pass through the firmament to the next place. To be driftwood that washes up on the shore of whatever the next place actually is. Seems weird, but maybe that's where we're naturally meant to be. I'm thinking it's possible that this world isn't some sort of proving ground or anything. Maybe it's just a waiting room. A beautiful, flawed, complex waiting room. <laughs> Aren't you feeling very philosophical today? Personally, I don't think there is anything like heaven or hell waiting for us. No judgment, either. The world doesn't ever operate in binaries or absolutes. That's just flawed human thinking, projected onto things that are much, much more complex than they can ever perceive. And I don't think what's waiting on the other side is even something that we can conceptualize. I bet it's cool. It's a shame it's a one-way trip, though. Dude, you took up all the time! The other guys didn't get any screen time at all. But I guess it's true. Yeah, it is a one-way trip and there is no way for us to communicate with the people in the afterlife, so to say, and, you know, ask them, Hey, how is life over there? How is life on the other side? Minor demon. Two-person job. A thousand people. Collingwood will probably give us Melbourne, right? Castles? Sure. Okay. Che? Hundred years. Getting used to. Ned. Standards, lore. Minor demon, lore. Collingwood, Melbourne. A thousand people. Ah, uh, the terminal. Two person job, terminal. Kishan, okay. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like I'm probably gonna stick with, um, for the side stories. Maybe just the ones that are listed in this big section here? These are the ones that are usually free, or they cost very, very little, I think. The other ones... Uh... I'm not as interested in it, and I feel like I really just want to see more of the main story, pretty much. And it's probably this one. Teen Transient. Yep. Like, reading the main story itself is pretty intense already. I don't think I can handle reading that much more. A teenage boy approached the counter. Shoulders slumped forward, head down, eyes on the ground up, until the moment he looked up to order a drink. He was old enough that he could have passed for a young adult, but the posture coupled with the oversized backpack he was wearing were a dead giveaway. He was a kid. Can I get a Coke? An order befitting of a kid. Yeah, I think we can manage that, says Maddie. Think fast. Maddie turned around, just in time to see an aluminum can, hurtling toward her. She almost caught it. Almost. <laughs> the can rolled back toward Che, who scooped it off the floor. He hesitated a moment before setting it on the counter. No ice, right? The boy nodded. No. Or, yeah. Yes to no ice. <laughs> yeah, in English, sentences like that, double negatives, if you don't want ice, you have to say no. 
But that's not the case in every language. For example, in Chinese and Japanese. To this question, if you want to say that you don't want ice, you would say yes. So these are things that people who know multiple languages gotta be careful about. I was just looking this up today, and I think this concept, this linguistic concept, is called negative concord. Double negatives. Shay cracked open the can and poured it into a waiting glass, which she then slid down the counter, pushing it gently enough that it came to a rest in front of the teenage boy. The boy grabbed the glass. Thanks. He glanced around. If you're looking for a place to sit, there should be plenty of seats upstairs. <laughs> the boy nodded and headed for the stairs. Plenty of seats down here too, said Maddie. Yeah. But I think upstairs is more Tuan's pace. What did you just call him? Tuan. People have names, you know. That's the problem with having regulars. People expect you to remember their names. Though, now that I think about it, Tuan probably wouldn't mind finding out that you don't know his name. Can't have your name on Maddie's shit list if she doesn't know it. <laughs> Should he be on my shit list? Nah, he's harmless. Maybe a bit susceptible to peer pressure. But I think that's why he comes here. To meet peers? To meet people who aren't his peers. Hmm. Some people do well with talking to people around their age. Some people do well with people older than them or younger than them. It's a little bit different for everybody, huh? For me personally, peers and below I do better with. People older than me I have a little bit of trouble with. How many glum teenagers do you see around here? Too many. Maybe not enough. Please tell me you don't actually mean that. Teenagers have the highest noise to spending ratio of any demographic. Not the glum ones. And if I were a glum teenager, trying to find my place in the world, and trying to carve out an identity for myself, I could imagine a worse place to do it than right here. Teenagers can go be glum somewhere else. Whatever happens to proper teenage delinquency? Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> We've been mercifully delinquent-free for quite a while now. Proper teenage delinquents don't loiter in coffee shops, said Maddie. They set things on fire, spray paint alleyways, and stay out past curfew. Does the city have a curfew for minors? It should, said Maddie. Teens need to be able to break rules, and all the better if committing acts of vandalism at 11pm gives them a two-for-one. Maybe they should just avoid delinquency and just stick to general mischief. Oh, no. We already have plenty of mischief around here, ever since Ashley set up shop. Got it. Next time I see Tuan, I'll tell him he needs to be committing more crimes. What'll you do if he actually takes your advice? He won't. Peer pressure only works if it's from a peer. Somebody my age telling him that won't do anything. Hmm. So find another teenager to tell him. I'll keep my eye out. <laughs> okay. Lots of different people come here. We don't really see them. But I think the cafe is actually quite crowded on a regular day. But does that mean that the people coming here are aware that sometimes some of these people are dead and some of them aren't? I don't know. That's kind of a scary thought. I would assume not. Oh, where are you now? Are you going downstairs? Day 2, 8.15pm, outside the terminal. Oh, she's picking up her delivery. Ugh. I don't have the energy for this. Maddie doesn't have any energy. Especially with everyone watching me. I hope he packed enough conductors. My order form was pretty vague. Oh, she might be ordering stuff for the necromancy ritual. The prologue might be more of an epilogue. Yeah, in that the events might be after what we're seeing here. I shouldn't be worrying about the conductors when I'm not even sure I can pull the whole thing off without some sort of a major screw-up happening. Supplier knew what I wanted the conductors for anyway, so he would have packed enough. A good supplier. There's a certain amount of nosiness that is polite. Well, it depends on how much they care about you. If you're a client and you tell the supplier, hey, I want this many conductors, 
then normally you would get that many conductors and no extras. And he knows that I've got Ashley helping me. Helping you with what, Madeline? Piss off, Ned. Well, he knows that we have a bottle of souls that he just drank. Rude. Oh no. You should respect your elders, you know? Ned is not a young man. Uh, remember back in the basement, we had five people. We had Shay, Ashley, Maddie, and then two silhouettes. Ned might have been one of them. God, listen to you. The council made you soft, didn't it? Oh, respect your elders. Follow our totally arbitrary rules, or we'll make up some cheap reason to destroy your business. My name's Ned and I love rules. You done? Yup. Cool. You sound wounded. A steel chest plate can save you from a bleeding heart, not a bruised ego. Haha. -ha. You should be nicer. Wow, sick comeback. What was it that guy that you killed said? Oh Christ, I am shot! Oh no, woe is me! Just a little throwback humor for ya. Well, I mean, at some point, if Ned's been doing this for a hundred years, maybe he really did, you know, turn out to be a turnover a new leaf. But you keep prodding at him. Did I strike a nerve? Did you just... Did I just what? Maddie. When Ned spoke next, it was in a deep, dark cadence, steeped in guilt and self-loathing. If Maddie had been able to see his eyes, she would have faced a withering glare. We're rapidly reaching a point of no return. I can no longer promise to shield you from the consequences of your actions. What you did just there, quoting one of my victims' dying words at me, that was low. Oh, were they actually somebody's dying words? I thought Maddie was just joking. Even for you. Frankly, I'm disgusted. At you and at myself. You dare to poke at my guilt? You dare? Let's talk about guilt, shall we? I don't suppose you might have anything weighing on your conscience right now, would you? As I thought. They may still weigh heavily on me, but I am absolved of my sins. But I'm not. I've had a hundred years to process that. And to redeem myself through my actions. You? Your sins are fresh. They're landmarks on your soul, deep cuts in your aura. Swallow your arrogance, novice. I know what you did. Oh, what did Maddie do? And I can't wait to see how you plan to make this right. Hmm... We're, we're in so much debt right now. Usually, if you think about sins, I feel like committing a sin puts us in a better position than we were in previously. But we're in debt, both for cash and for time. So we're not really in any good position at all. What did I do that's so sinful? Eight thirty. Ooh, new people. Oh, the teenager, Tuan. Sixteen. Thinks he's smart. Didn't we all when we were sixteen? Not antisocial, just shy. Read a bunch of Wikipedia articles on optometry and considers himself somewhat of an expert. 
Hmm. So I think the primary memories, those were the ones that we really need to read to get a bit of a better look here, because Tuan, he's the one that appeared in that one. Hannah. 16. No, she's too smart for her own good. Now we know from the story that this guy usually comes alone, right? So this time, he came with a friend. Hobbies, people watching. Self-indulgent teenage angst. Taking advantage of the fact that she's too smart for her own good. So I'm not sure that alcohol actually makes you feel anything. In fact, going by its chemical properties, I'd say it's the opposite. <sighs> Shut up, dork. We're planning a heist. Metaphysical debates about alcohol can come after. But this isn't metaphysics. I'm just talking about simple chemical interactions with our brains. <laughs> You're a smarty pants, aren't you? Tuan is a guy who has a look of someone who knows more about chemical interaction than human interaction. <laughs> really accurate, and we've only heard him speak twice so far. Please take the energy you're putting into pedantry and redirect it towards the plan. By comparison, Hannah is much more social. Hannah is a girl who is ordinarily down for wordplay, but right now she's too busy with physical shenanigans to have time for verbal shenanigans. A heist, did you guys say? The plan? The plan. What's the plan? I was thinking I could just reach over the bar and grab the first bottle I see. Oh, they're underage! And they wanna... they wanna drink alcohol. Hmm... Sounds risky. Very chaotic neutral. <laughs> Who are all these people? Ah! Ah, Ned! And then... Maddie? Ashley? And then Che, I guess, would be this one, which would be like what? Uh, this is Lawful Good. Oops. And then, yeah, Lawful Good. N like, Neutral. Ugh, I forgot the chart. What was it again? And then, like, Chaotic Evil. <laughs> and what's your alignment, then? N neutral Good? Oh, this one's Che. This one is Tuan. Yeah? We haven't had a good look at him yet. Neutral good? Uh-huh. And this one's probably... Hannah. There we go. Now we got a better look. I'd say I was lawful neutral, but... That's the coward's option. Yeah. But getting back to the plan... <laughs> she got it already! Oh! Using your own pedantry to distract you was absolutely part of the plan. Wow, so little faith in me? Gotta minimize liabilities here. Yeah, she's a smart girl. Hannah's still learning to trust the guy. He doesn't have the look of an interloper, but you can never be too safe. You're out here playing checkers while I'm playing six-dimensional upside-down laser chess. Shit. I've galaxy-brained this, and now I'm holding the fruits of my labor. Don't you mean our labor? If you insist. Give me a closer look at that. <laughs> you can kind of tell they're 16 from the way they talk. Galaxy brain. What sort of fruit do we pluck from the booze tree? Hey, if you're gonna steal the alcohol, are you gonna drink it right at the bar? Really stretching that metaphor out, huh? Yup. I don't recognize the language on this label. What? Let me look. You guys, put the alcohol somewhere safe and out of sight. What the hell? Hmm? I don't recognize it either. Maybe it's a cipher. A cider is made from fermented apple juice. A cipher is made from fermented word juice. <laughs> Who'd make you read a cipher just to know what you're drinking? Why don't you just try it out? A sadist? Oh, we could ask Maddie what it is. She's a sadist, right? Oh yeah, just go ask the bartender about the alcohol that you stole. What do you call someone who enjoys empathetic pain they feel from hurting others? Oh. Sa... 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 Yeah, that idea sounds great. Let's go find her the... Apart from the fact that we specifically nicked it from her. Oh, right. You're meant to be the lawful one here, dude. We agreed on neutral good. Me not challenging your assertion does not make it an agreement. 
regardless... Wait, hold on. I sense a dark presence. Do you feel it? No, I don't feel anything particularly spooky in the air. Yeah, me neither. Ah! <laughs> Hello, children. I see you've stooped to petty thievery. Some of the bottles on that shelf are old enough that swiping them would be an act of grand theft. Not this one, however. Alas, sprung. Ah, I can't believe my heist career is over so quickly. Aw, oh, don't give up on your dreams, kid. Speaking of, you know what happens when you drink this? I was assuming some sort of drunkenness. Well, not unless if you're drinking a bottle of souls. Does it make your teeth fall out? Well, last time I had a shot of this, I woke up in Adelaide. I... wow. I don't know how far Adelaide is from Melbourne, but I assume really far. Oh, so the result was 700 kilometers worth of drunkenness and bad decisions. But I woke up six hours before I took the shot. Had to drive a rented car back and explain to Che why I disappeared without a trace and somehow accidentally time traveled. Time traveling? Are you are you joking or are you for real? <laughs> I'm new here, I don't know. Holy shit, can we give it a try? <laughs> God no. You ever heard of liquor licensing laws? I'd end up in jail. I think it'd be an excellent formative experience. Yeah, if you're not perpetrating teen drinking culture, you're a loser. <gasps> I'm a loser. Somehow, I remain unconvinced by your passionate arguments. Well, we tried. You kids have way too much time on your hands, you know that? Better than not having enough, right? I'm utilizing my time to practice my skills. It's not wasted. Well, the non-existent industry sector that relies solely on the skill of reaching over bars and stealing bottles of enchanted booze is gonna be lucky to have you. Aw, that's so validating. Thanks. <sighs> Can I get you to a coffee or anything? Hot chocolate? I'm kind of busy tonight, but I'm hoping that bribing you with free drinks will stop you from nicking my shit. I'll take a free drink? <laughs> I feel guilty taking one since it was Tuan's idea. Hey! But I'll graciously accept your offer. Neat. What'll it be? Hot chocolates for the both of us? Uh, hot chocolates for the both of us. No booze today. Alrighty, two hot chocolates coming up. Seriously, don't steal anything else while my back's turned, or I'll feed you to a spite elemental. Spite elemental. Hmm. Does these guys sound like they know about what's going on here? The whole life and death concept? Just knowing about spite elementals and time traveling and stuff? And not being surprised by it. I wonder... Spite elemental... Oh! <laughs> Maybe it's a metaphor. Is she saying that she'll eat us? Is she the Spite Elemental? Oh no. Maybe the real Spite Elementals were the friends we made along the way? I hate this. Fair. Yeah, the same question as me. Ooh. Hello, she looks... Of age. Samantha. Yes, she is definitely of age. 32. American? Visiting Melbourne for work. What kind of work? Devastatingly patient. Trust me, you kids don't want to meet a spite elemental. Have you? Yup. Got pretty close to not making it out alive. I guess you're in a fairly exciting line of work, then. This woman's line of work might seem intriguing to someone looking, from, looking in from the outside, but to her, it's all business. It gets that way sometimes. But spider elementals aren't exciting. They're terrifying. 
They suck out all the air out of a room and make the world ache. And they don't die easy. Huh. That's kind of metal. You sure do need brass balls to face one down, that's for sure. And a steely gaze? What? Uh... Cause steel is a metal, and I said it was metal, and then you mentioned brass balls, so... <laughs> Hannah, please back me up. Nope, you brought this on yourself, mate. No. Nah, she's totally right. Ah! Uh. What's going on here? You bullying my customer, Samantha? Of course not. Good, because that's my job. <laughs> you two should go enjoy the evening. There's a nice breeze blowing. Trying to get them out of here? Are you closing up shop early for the night? Is Samantha coming here for a job? You remembered my name. That's sweet. Sweet isn't a word people use often to describe Maddie. That's the kind of remark that says more about the person who's talking than the person they're talking about. Well, she's older, right? I assume Maddie's like in her 20s. Did we find out her age before? I forgot. Of course I did. You're interesting. Doesn't that describe everyone who walks through your doors, though? Absolutely not, especially not in the way that you are. Some people would take offense at that. Your boss, hmm, must be very different to mine. Well, my old boss, I guess. I'm my own boss now, actually. Hmm, can Maddie be her own boss? Apologies. Your approach to hospitality work is very different from what I'm used to, is what I'm trying to say. Figures, where'd you work? Just some dive bar overseas. Wretched hive of scum and villainy. The owner would never shut up about treating every client like royalty. Sounds like a pain in the arse if you ask me. I'm not asking actually, but I appreciate the sentiment nonetheless. Someone she's not prickly towards, that's a first. So, can I get you anything? Surprise me. <laughs> this is reminding me of Valhalla. <laughs> You'd like me to pick you something? Yeah. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Are they related to the drink? Yup. Shoot. Okay. What's your favorite white wine? Uh, you're not making me a Moaim cocktail, are you? <laughs> no. I'm partial to a glass of Marzan every now and then. Fancy. Next question. Have you ever read a star chart? Like in astrology? No. Why? I don't put any stock in mysticism. Hey, this place isn't mystical. Isn't it? Oh, I guess it depends on the world we come from, yeah. It's built out of cold hard facts. I just don't know them all yet. Oh, very scientific approach. Alright, fair enough. Last question. You're walking in the shallows of an ocean that seems to go in the distance forever. You can't see any land, aside from the sand under your feet. Whenever you step forward, the sand sinks, just a little bit. As far as you can see, there's no way to escape. Drowning is the only possible outcome. What do you do? Wow, I feel like you're about to pull out a Voight-Kampf machine or something. It's obviously some sort of test. I run, I swim, I dive when I can. And if I eventually drown, then so be it. There's nowhere else to go, and no point to sitting and waiting for starvation, or sharks, or someone to save me. I have to take action. Interesting. So, what's the verdict? Hmm. Do we get to find out the results of that IQ test? 
Samantha didn't get a response. Maddie's eyes had glazed over as soon as she'd answered the last question, and now she stood perfectly still, glazing intensely at the rows and rows of dusty bottles lining dustier shelves. Her lips moved, but no words came out. As Samantha watched, a flask of red liquid twitched, seemingly of its own accord. Maddie craned her neck up at it and scowled. In response, a smaller bottle, next to the first and surely only big enough to hold a few drops of something, began to glow. Her scowl shifted to a wry smile. Was that black magic? She did an incantation and the bottle came out? Oh my god. Please, you don't need to open anything new on my account. Oh. Oh. Gotcha. Your answers were interesting. Hmm. Yeah, coming from someone like Maddie who is pretty interesting herself. So are your questions. I'm still having a little trouble figuring out how they relate to each other, though. Hmm, is that important? I try to maintain a vague hope that maybe, one day, things might make sense. <laughs> Until then? I just try to go with the flow, of course. <laughs> Sorry for trying to psychoanalyze you there. Try? Do you think you failed? No. What's the verdict then? Well, for one, you tend to accept things as you see them. You don't try to interpret things based off unrelated frameworks or thought patterns. Mm-hmm. That said, you do try to make sense of the connections between things when you can. Hmm. Putting together the pieces, Maddie seems like quite an analytical person, so I'm not surprised that she can say all this. But it's no big deal to you if you don't. You just mark it as an unknown variable and move on. Well, if you live in this kind of world where you don't know anything, you gotta do that. And that reads to me as an intensely pragmatic approach. Would you agree? I suppose. You're the sort who doesn't buy drinks to enjoy them. You buy them as camouflage. Oh, because Maddie might be doing the same thing with drinks? To hide your face behind. To project a veneer of being untouchable while you watch. Watch what? Everything, I suppose. You take everything in the same way I do. So you're saying that I'm attentive, but that I don't worry about instantly understanding how things are interconnected. Because you're confident that eventually you'll understand it anyway. How do you figure that? You've been watching my hands this whole time. Is that weird? To watch an attractive bartender mixing a very fancy looking cocktail? To appreciate a craft? No. But given just how interested you are in what my hands are doing, I've wagered that you've got some experience in my field. And we know this because you worked in a bar before. She said so earlier. Ooh. So, are you just really bad at picking up on when you're being flirted with, or...? Oh! <laughs> oh! Okay, oh, uh, oh! <laughs> I... It's fine, sweetie. In fact, it's pretty cute. I, I, I meant an alchemy! The field of alchemy! Uh-huh. I'm sure you're very accomplished in alchemy. <laughs> just take the drink. I have to say I didn't catch on either, so I might be just as dumb as Maddie. <laughs> oh shit, this is really good. Yeah? Too good to ignore, yeah. It's smoky, but bittersweet, and... Oh. 
It's the contrast with the bitters that really makes you appreciate the sweetness. Or is it the other way around? Yeah, a little bit of both. Almost makes me feel like I'm reaching the end of something. Like, I've got a lump in my throat from saying goodbye. But I can't quite tap into that feeling. Like, nostalgia? Like, what did you even put in this? Uh... Mezcal? Artichoke bitters? Gold heart bitters? And a slice of Gorilla Lime. Gorilla Lime? That can't be a real thing. It's just hard to acquire. Call it that, because if you bite into one, it feels like you got punched by a gorilla. Physically? <laughs> no, emotionally. Ah, makes sense. I'm not a wizard! Prove it! Ah! The guy the boss you mentioned? Yeah. He good to you? I'm sorry? We're not dating! Does he treat you well? Yeah. To a fault, actually. Far past the point where it's rational for him to still be nice to me. Because I'm doing all these illegal things and whatnot. Good. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. That reminds me, I have to dash. Got some setup work for a project to finish before the sun comes up. <gasps> Her necromancy ritual, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. <gasps> but without you here, who will enable my latent alcoholism? Eh. You can just reach over the bar and grab the gin. Tonic's in the bar fridge. <laughs> will do. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is why we're broke. We're not charging anybody for anything. So as long as you're of age, you can just reach over yourself. Come back soon, though. I'd love to discuss alchemy with you some more. Uh-huh, catch you later. <laughs> Wait, one last thing. What was the meaning behind the question about what wine I like? Oh. I was just curious. <laughs> Here we go. That's the last one, I reckon. Does it have the magic caps in it? I think so? You can just call them caps, you know? They're built for something different. I refuse to use non-specific language. Uh-huh. Magic caps? Yeah, they're in here. Okay, uh, what about the thing? Y you'll have to be a little bit more... Uh, oh, you know, the thing, sparky thing. Ashley likes having friends who can understand her, even when she fails to be specific. Well, she's young, she's young. Electric. Sweetie, how long have you been awake? It's better for you if you don't know, I think. Do you mean the voltage regulator? That's the one. Good job. It's in one of the other boxes. We need Ashley's help because she's the mechanic. I didn't think we needed another one, though. Are you kidding? The last one literally melted. It's a good thing I have an extremely sick metal arm. Otherwise, I would have been badly injured. Hmm. Did she get into an accident that made her replace the arm? Yeah, thank goodness. Hey, there's a milk carton guy. Uh, Lovelace. Is there anything missing? I shall check. Need some espresso? No more. I think I'll literally die if I have any more. Hey, that's really mature of you. Nice job. Yeah, whatever. You can give me some chocolate if you want. Oh, chocolate has caffeine. <laughs> At least it's not more espresso. Sure thing. Be back in a moment. Oh, hey dude. Where you been? Hey. Just chilling. Not much to do when you're waiting to die. It's past 24 hours already, dude. Just putting the time dead on Maddie's tab. 
That's taking advantage of people's hospitality, man. Come on. Hey! Come on, Cooper. I know you're hiding down there somewhere. It's Lovelace. Hold this, will ya? It sounds like the little guys can't talk to people. They just talk among themselves in the beginning of a chapter. Or at the end, depending on how you look at it. Did Ned really say that? Yeah. Do you believe it? I'm not sure. Well, it's not a lie. The most dangerous lies are the lies we tell ourselves. Oh. But... It's not the whole truth either. And? And I don't quite have the time to untangle it for you. Mm hmm. I've got a hungry teenager downstairs, and a summoning ritual to complete. Oh, she's a part of this too? Summoning ritual. Don't you take that judgy tone with me. Hey, far be it from me to moralize at you. Getting a lot of that these days, mate. I'm just trying to keep everyone happy. So the ritual is not for Kishan then. But who are we trying to bring back? Tough gig. I'll say. Alright, now if you can solder these two wires... No, not those ones! Ah, oh, bloody hell. Who programmed you? Bet she's a jerk. <laughs> Incredibly intelligent, but a very bad programmer. Hmm. Ashley has learned how to program exactly the minimum amount she needs to, and not one iota more. <laughs> You're talking about yourself, right? Ah! Oh god, that's dangerous. Wow. You're really out of it, huh? Where'd you even pull this from? She's sleep deprived. Leg holster? You aren't wearing a leg holster. Arm holster? You're prosthetic? It holds six million knives. Don't question me on this. I'm the expert here. Mm-hmm. Hey. Need a hand? Dude, you should check yourself before you fucking wreck yourself! No, that's not what I meant! Oh. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I guess you can help. Before I ask what you need, what are you even doing? You're fixing the milk carton guy? Maddie mentioned a summoning circle? Yeah, something like that. You ever wanted to live forever? Ooh. I'd trade that just for having a second chance, honestly. Well, grab me that box, please. You can't just leave me hanging like that. Watch me. And while you watch me leave you hanging, you can go get the box. You wanted someone to say, yes, here is your second chance, but it's not that easy. Yeah, so, um, this is really heavy. What's even in here? 100 meters of heavy gauge copper cable. A bunch of capacitors that I'm gonna wire together soon. Hmm? The copper wire, most normal thing. Most normal thing here. And some various bits and bobs. That would definitely explain the weight. Oh, there's also a bunch of clamps. So, what do you need? Validation. Chocolate. Coffee! <laughs> a school system that doesn't punish me for having weird and niche interests. Uh, I, I meant more, uh... Communism! I don't think I can get you communism, sorry. And isn't Maddie already getting you chocolate? <sighs> You're a terrible comrade, Kishan! If I wasn't close to hitting the LD50 of caffeine, I'd ask you for some coffee. So all you can do right now is give me that sweet validation. Uh, okay. Your... real... thumbs up? Good human. I don't know what sort of validation you want here. 
Praise. I feel like I'm stuck in a loop of trying things that are inevitably gonna fail, and I don't know how much of it is my fault for not being good enough at a monumentally difficult task. I'm used to being effortlessly good at things, but I feel like my brain is full of bees on this one. And can I deal with failure? I don't think I can. I'm not equipped for failure. My entire perception of myself is that I'm good at things. I'm gifted and talented and incredibly afraid that I'm going to let people down at a vital moment. This is that vital moment. But I just sit here, paralyzed. And I rationally know that a lot of this pressure is just me being hard on myself. But Maddie and I, we tried this already, and we failed pretty badly. <gasps> what if the failure is why Ashley lost her arm? Hmm. But these feelings of inadequacy or being afraid to not live up to people, pretty common among people, I think. It was a disaster. I can't understate how badly it turned out. So, even with all the prep I'm doing, is this enough? Did we learn enough to do it properly? Numbers and formulas and hard science are good, but I can't shake this feeling that I'm gonna screw it up for everyone. And I'm so, so afraid of letting Maddie down. Oh, yes. There are very few things we fear more than disappointing the people we love most. Definitely. Wait, there's two of these milk horn guys. That's heavy as shit, mate. You reckon? Fully, yeah. I don't know what to say to that, except that I don't think Maddie would ever feel let down by you. I know I've only been here for like two days, but her and Che seem to really care about you, and I'm sure that extends to accepting you for who you are, limitations and all. Though honestly, I think you give off a pretty strong vibe of not giving a shit about your limitations. Or that you indiscriminately power through them, with some sort of raw caffeine-fueled fury. Yeah, you do give off that impression. Anyway, you're immensely powerful, and I'm terrified of you. Was that the validation you were looking for? Fair enough. I was never really super smart or gifted or anything. Mm hmm? Agreed. I just floated through school and work and never focused on much except having a good time. I can definitely imagine the sort of pressure you'd have on you though, especially given how big this task is. Yeah. So while I can't say for sure that this thing is going to be easy, or even successful... Nothing is easy here. I do think it's important that you work on giving yourself a break from the weight of your own expectations. But... It's not an easy thing, I'm sure. But my boyfriend is similar. He's very hard on himself when he feels like he's letting himself down. So, it doesn't go away? I don't think so. No. You just gotta... Um, let that logical side take over more. Logically understanding that you're being hard on yourself. You gotta drill it into your head. I think it just gets easier to deal with as you learn to be more empathetic to yourself. Self-forgiveness and all that? Hmm... Mm-hmm. We find it very easy to forgive other people, but forgiving ourselves somehow feels infinitely harder. I can relate to that. It definitely took him a good few years to even begin to be able to deal with his self-imposed shame. Hmm. I guess I can try that? You can try that. 
Or you can continue feeling super bad about yourself all the time. I mean, when you put it like that... Right? I hate how rational you sound. I know, I know. I'm disgusted at myself. Yeah, Ashley is a genius level prodigy or whatever, but sometimes that's not the happiest way to be. Maybe being happy. Being normal is the easiest way to be happy. Sup, nerds? What's going on in this thread? God, oh my god, the internet speak. What? You're suddenly in a good mood. I maybe ate some of your chocolate. Maybe. <laughs> oh, I swear to god, if there isn't any left... Yes, we've been over this before. You'll comprehensively murderize me. Don't worry, I only ate a little bit. Wait, this one is chocolate. It's like Hershey's, but Ashley's. Excellent! Is this enchanted chocolate or just normal chocolate? Unenchanted dark chocolate? Where does that fall in the normal abnormal chocolate spectrum? I love dark chocolate! It is very enchanted. Does he deserve to know? I don't know. I kind of like the mystery. It's completely normal chocolate, isn't it? Maybe. Maybe not. Can I have some then? Uh, come on, you owe me. For what? Helping you set up all this. Oh yeah, that's fair. Mm. Ah, so maybe in the in the prologue, besides Jay, Ashley, and Maddie, it was Kishan and Ned. Yeah, the two silhouettes. This is totally normal chocolate. Yeah. Did you expect it to not be? Well, you implied. We never implied. You came up with that one all on your own. I... Ah, oh, damn it. Alright, I'm bored. Later, dorks. Don't you run off on me, miss. That magic hat bank isn't even half done. I'll do it later. For now, I'm gonna go take a nap under that table. If anyone disturbs me... Come on! You'll be... happy? Confused. Ticklish. Extra hungry. I will... Mention me in your diary? You have a diary. <laughs> Wait, Ashley has a diary, Maddie doesn't. I will exact terrible revenge on you both later. Jeez, that phrase definitely doesn't start with an M. Ah, bye! <laughs> you don't need a blanket? Wasn't Ashley sleeping in the beginning prologue? Heh. <laughs> I'm not being too hard on her, am I? You? Nah, she thinks you're great. Hmm, good. I could probably stand to give her a break, though. No. Hmm? I mean, just... I'm expecting a lot from her right now. She's basically the person responsible for making this work. She does seem a little... overloaded. Fuck. But she'd tell me if things were too much, right? I don't know. It seems like she idolizes you. I reckon she'd pretty happily burn herself out for you, you know? I... I just need her for the next four or five hours, then everything will be okay. Is that when you're planning on performing the ritual? This thing? Yeah. What's it for anyway? Conduit ritual. Super forbidden magic. Oh, cool. <laughs> Are you actually cool with this, or...? Not hugely, actually. Why is that? Well, you know, I was talking to Ned earlier, and... Actually, don't worry about it. Kishan, you gotta think about whether you wanna get the job or not, okay? 
This is your job. You are staying here. Every minute you're staying here, you're giving Maddie more debt. It's fine. I don't care. That's code word for, yeah, I really care. What's it do? You know how I took a couple of hours from you down here? Vividly. This is just the bigger scale version of that spell. Higher capacity. Uh, who are you taking hours from? Nobody. Don't worry, bud. You're at a deficit already. Hmm. Aren't shouldn't you be really itchy right about now? I can't touch you. Right. Okay. So, even if you're lying right now, shouldn't you have taken enough to pay off your debt multiple times at this point? Well, Ashley said that last time they did this, it went poorly. Beyond poorly. Ha! The hours weren't for that. Or maybe it just felt like hours. What the hell did you do with them, then? Where'd they go? Is she gonna give it to you? For our research, we use the following materials. Wire of copper, heavily drawn. Jasmine chalk, not Dover. Sustained electric supply of at least 20 volts. Car battery? Capacitors composed of boot need better durability. However, we believe extra components are required. Our conduit's properties varied with the layout of our summoning circle, and despite the departure of our test subject during our trials, we were able to ascertain a number of efficiency-oriented refinements. Your subject left in the middle? As well as the absolute necessity of a living but non-sentient vessel to act as a so-called storage container. Living but non-sentient? What even falls under that category? More testing is required, though obtaining a willing subject for future methodology evaluations without attracting the attention of the council will be difficult, to say the least. I start them. All those hours are in this tree. Ooh. 